there everybody, it's Mark Crowley. I'm back with another video. Today I'm going to be doing a vlog looking back on the year 2017 so far. And uh, you know I always like to have you have something to look at while I talk, so I'm going to go ahead and start adding some color to this uh, ink illustration that I did some time ago, earlier this year. Um, and uh, of course that was all about sort of dip pen inking, and this time I thought, well, let's add some color to it while I chat with you. Now, full disclosure, um, uh, I'm in the middle of a uh, very tight book deadline right now, so it's not a coincidence that I'm doing a uh, video where I just sort of talk for a while. Um, uh, to be honest with you, I came very close to saying, you know, maybe I just don't do any video at all this week so as to catch up with the deadlines, but um, I thought, no! I've got people out there waiting for me. <laughs> expecting a video. I promised, I've promised you all a new video every Friday, and dadgummit, I'm going to deliver. Uh, so that's what we're doing today, and who knows, maybe some of you will enjoy this little peek behind the scenes, uh, talking a little more about uh, my real life and, and what I do when I'm not making YouTube videos. So uh, I'm going to go back to uh, January now and talk about um, uh, the big events of the year uh, for me. Now, uh, I should say that uh, last uh, year in the fall, we bought a uh, dog, a corgi. Uh, which my daughter uh, had been really asking for for many years. And uh, we finally gave in and got one last fall, and so uh, the dog was born on um, August 1st of last year, so by January, um, about, you know, half a year old, so still kind of in that puppy phase, very cute, still needing to be uh, house trained. <laughs> I'm pleased to say that she uh, has successfully uh, reached the stage where she doesn't take a pee inside the house. Um, you know, and it's funny, I'll be honest with you, I, I resisted for years. Um, getting a dog, mainly because we do these trips out of the country, and I was like, how can you have a dog and then also take a trip to Japan or whatever? Um, and in the old days we would go for quite a long time. Uh, anyway, more on that later. But uh, now that we got a dog, I'm just so glad. And uh, that's probably no surprise to those of you who have dogs. There's just something about a dog that um, it opens up something in you that maybe you didn't even realize was there. This, this love of animals, and of, of course the one animal in particular that is now part of your family. And uh, so yeah, the, the, the year started out on a happy note with uh, this new aspect of uh, dog ownership. And um, let's move on then now to uh, February with um, a trip, a very special trip that I made to Los Angeles. This was very unusual. You know, I do, some, I do public speaking. Uh, where I speak at schools and libraries, but I made a very unusual trip. I was invited to make an unusual trip in, in uh, February with, that was sort of privately funded by an individual, uh, a woman who wanted to give a gift to her uh, grandson, uh, the gift of uh, meeting me, basically. And so um, she, at her own expense, uh, paid for a flight uh, for me, uh, from uh, uh, Detroit to Los Angeles, and um, it was, it really was a, a marvelous time. I got to meet the whole family, and she had prepared this special meal, and um, th uh, the kid that uh, was a sort of a fan of my videos, um, I shouldn't say kid, because he was uh, older than that, the, the young man who was a fan of my videos, uh, was an artist himself, and I was able to look at his work and encourage him, and um, it, it really was a special thing. Like I say, it doesn't happen very often, usually it's, uh, you know, and for good reason, it's expensive to <laughs> pay for <laughs> air travel for somebody, but that was uh, very kind of her to do that as a gift, uh, and hopefully uh, the, it was <laughs> they were not disappointed. What a ripoff! Why did we bring this guy up? <laughs> anyway. Um, so that was a special thing, and what I did, um, um, just uh, knowing that I was going to be out there in Los Angeles, I, uh, I arranged to get together with Evan Burse, uh, who uh, runs the uh, YouTube uh, channel uh, 
Cartoon Block, and Evan and I have known each other for a while. He, he did this interview. Some of you maybe have even seen this interview. It's one of the rare things uh, on YouTube where you can see my face. Uh, he had flown out years ago to, uh, to Detroit to do this uh, uh, series of videos that uh, he put on his channel. And anyway, I thought, well, he lives, I know he lives in L.A., so uh, let's get together. And we did. We had a wonderful time. Uh, and I got to meet his wife and uh, got to see his studio. In fact, uh, maybe I'll splice in a photo. I thought I might try doing that throughout this video just to give you some visual uh, info about all the stuff that I'm talking to you about. Maybe I'll try to splice in the photo of uh, Evan. And here, just to make things easier for myself, I'll, I'll go ahead and hit the pause button so I know where to splice it. All right, so there you see a photo of uh, my good friend Evan Burse, and uh, it really was uh, fun to see him again. Only really the second time I've ever seen him face to face, and uh, he showed me a good time. He drove me into um, uh, downtown LA uh, to go to Japan, little Tokyo, uh, where I was able to buy some of these uh, uh, delicious Japanese uh, tea cakes uh, called wagashi, which are not available over here in Michigan. So thank you, Evan, for making that special trip and allowing me to bring those home for my uh, wife and kids to enjoy. Um, but let's move along now to, I'm going to sort of combine uh, March and April and May into a single thing. Uh, really, May ended up being quite a, uh, um, a busy month in, in terms of travel and doing interesting things. Um, there is this uh, amazing uh, children's book children's picture book art museum in Abilene, Texas. Uh, some of you, if you follow me on uh, Twitter or uh, Instagram or Facebook, you may have, you may remember seeing when my art was on display. Actually, I made a video about when my art was on display in, in, in a museum in uh, Florida. Well, that was all started by this uh, um, museum in uh, Abilene, Texas. Uh, that sort of launched and put this whole uh, exhibition together. And um, so they had invited me to come back. They were celebrating, I think it was their 20th anniversary of this museum. It's called the Nickel. They call it the Nickel. It's the, boy, I don't know if I'm going to be able to remember this. <laughs> it's N-C-C-I-L. I should know this by now. But it's Children's Illustrated uh, uh, Literature, I believe, is the last part there. Um, and uh, they do, it is a marvelous museum, and the people there are so kind, and they, uh, yeah, they, out of all the different guests that they've had over the years, they decided to include me, which was, I thought, a huge honor, uh, and so, yeah, I went down there and uh, spoke, and one of the interesting things about Abilene, if, you're, if you are anywhere near Abilene, and you're a fan of uh, Rise of the Guardians, or indeed any of the works of, um, uh, William Joyce, who is the creator of um, uh, the story and the character designs uh, that uh, Rise of the Guardians was uh, based on, uh, you should definitely uh, go to Abilene, Texas. So they got all these statues of characters uh, from that movie. And um, it's just uh, really impressive to see. They're like, they're, they're like bronze uh, sculptures in you know, public uh, parks and stuff. Uh, that you can see, and yeah, I would think if you were a big fan of that movie, you would just love seeing uh, all those statues. And uh, if the museum may even, sometimes they have a special exhibition. Uh, I mean, the museum is connected to William Joyce. I think it would not maybe not exist if not for the efforts of William Joyce and, and uh, the sort of... Uh, local city government of Abilene that helped uh, bring it into existence. And uh, so I highly recommend if you live anywhere near Abilene, checking that out. I had a lot of fun going down there and seeing, uh, you know, the friends that I had made during my previous visit, which was some number of years uh, prior to that. And um, like I said, May was uh, a big year, uh, big month for uh, travel and doing lots of different things. Um, uh, after the Abilene, uh, trip. There was a trip for me to New York City for the uh, Book Expo. Now, this was sponsored by my publisher, 
uh, of the Mastering Manga books. Um, the uh, imprint is called uh, Impact. You may, if you look at the spine of a Mastering Manga book, you'll see the uh, Impact on it. And actually, they're the publisher of an awful lot of books. Uh, those of you who um, are fans of Jazza uh, and uh, of uh, Bailey J, they also their books are also done by the same publisher, Impact. Well, Impact flew me out to uh, New York to attend the. Um, this book expo, and uh, so of course that's any time you get flown out to New York City, that's a thrill. I, I enjoyed that, and it was fun to meet those people face to face, and to um, uh, also uh, meet some people like uh, from like Hobby Lobby, you know, like and different people like that. You get or uh, Michaels, uh, uh, the people who run these stores that sell the book. You know, you can come out, and I got to shake their hands and thank them in person. Uh, so that was a fun trip. And then, uh, on a more personal note, the big thing about the uh, end of May for me was my uh, son, Matthew, uh, graduating from uh, high school. Uh, I don't talk a whole lot about my uh, kids and my family uh, on YouTube. I'm just very, a little reluctant to uh, drag them into my <laughs> public world here. Uh, but uh, I thought, in this, in the you know, within this video, why not uh, say a word or two about um, my son graduating from high school and how incredibly proud uh, we uh, are of him. He worked really hard. He really, um, especially during his junior and senior year of high school, worked very hard to get uh, the best possible grades and he graduated uh, at the top of his class. And um, yeah, it's just uh, hats off to him and we, and we couldn't be more proud of him. And uh, later on in this video, I'll, I'll be talking about how uh, he went off to college. But let's uh, we'll keep that in order uh, of events as they take place. And um, so the next one uh, that I should talk about is uh, the whole summer. When I think about the summer uh, of uh, of 2017, I'm going to be thinking a lot about how my daughter Mio uh, got into drumming. She had been asking for quite a long time for a drum set uh, of her own. And um, I eventually gave in and bought her uh, an electronic uh, drum set that we keep in the basement. And uh, she has been very good about um, practicing and she's getting better and better. So call this the proud of my kids part of the video, but uh, very much, uh, you know, I had my doubts in a way at, at first. I was like, is she, is this just sort of something she thinks she's into? And then I'm going to, you know, spend all this money on this drum kit and then it's going to sit there and collect dust. It's kind of every parent's uh, secret fear sometimes of uh, uh, different things. Of course, the kids know better. They know. I'm not just messing around. I really want this. And uh, she definitely has uh, proven that and they, yeah, I've been impressed with how good she's gotten uh, at the drumming. And uh, so, uh, but again, I, so I do sort of, I'm reluctant to sometimes people say, hey, show us a photo of your kids. And, um, maybe I will at some point. I'm, you know, with the internet, it's just a little, you don't know who's out there and what weird people <laughs> may fixate on kids. And uh, so I'm a little hesitant, hesitant to put photos of them. Uh, into the videos, but that does not mean that I am not proud of them. I'm incredibly proud of my kids, and, uh, especially um, of my uh, son and daughter this year and, and their success with their different pursuits. Um, but of course, the big event of the year, and I'm definitely going to splice in some photos, uh, was uh, the trip to Japan. Now, uh, those of you who've been following me for a while, you'll know that I, uh, my family and I have made a number of trips to Japan. We try to go once every two years. And so this was the year that we got to do it, and that was in June, end of June, beginning of July. We did things slightly different this year, uh, and it is related to what I said about the dog. Uh, normally we would go for as long as a month sometimes at a time and, and really um, get to kick back and enjoy life over there in Japan. Um, because of the dog, uh, we couldn't have the trip go quite as long. And we actually sort of split the family in two temporarily. Uh, and um, my wife and son went over to Japan first. And my uh, daughter and I stayed here in Michigan, um, taking care of the dog for one extra week. Uh, and so for my 
uh, wife and son, they were in Japan for three weeks, for my daughter and I, just two. Uh, but what it meant was really a, a week at home here with just my daughter and I, which was kind of fun, you know, sort of a bonding time and uh, uh, a lot of carry-out food. I'll be honest, a lot of carry-out food. <laughs> We had a great time, and uh, it was kind of a thrill in a way to have just the two of us get on the plane to fly to Japan, because um, uh, that, you know, it's, I've always had Miki, my wife, along with me to sort of negotiate all of the different stuff of, you know, like going into the country and getting on the trains and so forth, and this time uh, I kind of had to do it on my own, uh, which was a little bit nerve-wracking, but we managed, especially with the help of a friend, uh, who helped guide us towards the trains that we needed to get on and eventually make our way to um, Fukuyama, Japan, which is the town where we always uh, have our uh, stay with my parent, my what did I say? My parents-in-law is that the right way to say it? My Miki, <laughs> Miki's parents, uh, my in-laws, and uh, always have a marvelous time with them. Made a special trip to see my wife's uh, brother who um, uh, took us all together on a, a long trip to a, a town called Hagi in Japan. And those of you who follow me on um, Instagram, you may remember seeing, I've sort of spread them out, but I've been posting photos from that trip. Uh, and uh, I think I'll go ahead and do that now, especially this trip to Hagi uh, resulted in some, you know, beautiful photographs of, of like a magical location that I discovered one early early one morning as I went for a walk and and discovered this temple. So I'm going to go ahead and splice in some of those photos right now showing this just beautiful moss-covered ancient uh, scenery uh, that I came across uh, in Hagi, Japan. So yeah, that uh, just uh, I feel incredibly lucky to have been able to go to Japan so many times over the years, and um, you know, with uh, Matthew, our uh, oldest uh, son, um, now moving on to college, I do feel like we're coming down to maybe the last trips. It's up to him. Maybe he will continue to uh, travel there with us for years to come. I hope he does. Um, but um, certainly, uh, I'm valuing those trips. More and more, I mean, you might think that I would become, um, start to take it for granted a little over the years because there have been like uh, 10 or more uh, individual trips to Japan. But that is not the case. I'm still always kind of freshly amazed by Japan, no matter how many times I go there. And uh, I'm just very aware of how fortunate I am uh, to be able to, to go there again and again. Um, it never gets old. It, not for me, it doesn't. Always just amazing to be over there. And uh, let's move on then to the month of August. We're getting a little closer to uh, the present day. August was when I uh, was flown to uh, Wizard World in Chicago, this comic book convention in Chicago, which I had been to uh, a number of times years ago. When I first started doing comics, my publisher called Sirius Entertainment, they used to um, set up uh, a table at the Wizard World uh, comic convention, and then they would, uh, you know, have me join them along with other artists that uh, they published uh, to sit at the table and sign books. And um, in a way, it was sort of just like a great social experience of uh, getting together with uh, uh, friends, and you would see the same faces again and again. Well, I kind of stopped doing that when my publisher stopped doing it. Uh, and had not been to such a convention for many, many years, but then they got in touch with me, Wizard World did, and said, hey, Mark, would you want to like to be a guest? We'll bring you out. And I was like, yeah, absolutely. And it was really fun, i got to say, you know, having not been to uh, one of these comic conventions for so long. I've been to anime conventions, like especially one in Dallas, Texas. I've been to a couple of times. And I, I basically say yes to almost any convention I'm invited to. Um, if, I, if it's at all possible. Um, 
Uh, and so for me, I was sort of like getting back into an American comic convention that, of course, there is some anime and, uh, at such a convention, but uh, there's a different vibe uh, when it is run by an American company and, and you've got the, you know, the superhero stuff. And, um, it really was a lot of fun, so much gratitude to Wizard World for um, having me out to that convention. And it's possible that they may uh, have me be at a guest, have me be a guest at some of the other uh, conventions that they run in different uh, towns. If you, um, for example, know that there's a Wizard World convention in your town, why not get in touch with them? You could say, hey, are you going to invite Mark Crilly as a guest? And then maybe they will say, hey, Mark, people want you at this show. It's certainly possible. And uh, so now we come to September, and that is when uh, my son Matthew um, uh, was, uh, you know, we piled him in the car and all his belongings and took him off to the University of Michigan, where he is now a freshman uh, in college. Uh, and, you know, U of M is just uh, one of the best schools in uh, the country if not the entire world, and uh, I'm very proud that he was able to get into U of M. It is not a given. It's very competitive. Um, so many people. There's just a limited number of seats available, and uh, for a while we were sort of like, boy, I hope he doesn't get, <laughs> I hope he's not headed for disappointment here if, if they don't let him, you know, uh, into the school. But not only did they... Um, you know, did he make it into the school, but he made it into this very um, even more competitive uh, program related to architecture in which there were only 20 seats available for, uh, you know, everyone, you know, who wanted to be, you know, you basically you were <laughs> you one of 20 seats. <laughs> Just so many people competing for those spots. And he did it. He got, he got one of those 20 spots. So again, uh, a theme of this video. Very proud of my son, Matthew. Um, and uh, uh, looking forward to seeing uh, the work that he does uh, there at U of M in uh, the years ahead. He's, of course, got at least three more to go. And uh, Ann Arbor is such a great town. I'm a big fan of Ann Arbor to begin with. And so gives us an excuse as a family to go over there periodically to uh, visit him. And we come now to October, the, the, the month that we just finished up, and uh, that this is probably, uh, well, of course, is where I'm going to stop for now. It's, it's, I know it's kind of weird to do a, <laughs> a looking back on the year video in October. Aren't you supposed to wait till December? Uh, again, you know the story. I, I'm doing this um, mainly because of my uh, book deadlines. And let me know what you thought of this video. Does it, uh, if you enjoyed it, I can do more of them. Uh, I, I wouldn't suddenly start doing them super frequently, but uh, um, sometimes I wonder if I just don't talk about my family and my uh, real life often enough. If people would prefer to know a little more about who is this guy with the hand <laughs> that we see in these videos. How come he never really tells us uh, what his day-to-day -day life is like? Uh, so the, the most recent trip was a trip uh, to Rochester, New York, um, where I was invited to speak at a, a school uh, that is uh, kind of located between these two small towns in upstate New York called uh, Mumford and Caledonia. And uh, that was a, a lot of fun. They put me up at a bed and breakfast uh, that had real history to it. I think it went back to the 19th century. And... Um, they were bringing me out in uh, coordination with uh, the drawing lesson, my, my graphic novel that teaches you how to draw. Uh, they had chosen that book as part of this one book, one community program in which they uh, give a copy of a book, whatever lucky book it is, they give one copy of it to everyone in the whole school. Uh, so when I got the email of them saying, hey, we've selected your book for this, I was like, oh my goodness, well, I'm so grateful. Um, that you would uh, do that for my book, and that means so many people get to read it. And uh, they said, would you be interested in coming out and speaking? And I said, of course, I would. Uh, how could I turn that down? Um, and so I had a lot of fun, went out there, had one afternoon to, my own, to myself uh, to sort of stroll around. It was just this beautiful October day. 
uh, in upstate New York, and I decided to walk the, it's like a mile and a quarter between these two towns. I walked from the town where I was staying to the other town that was so nearby, sort of sister cities there. And uh, I'm always going to look back very fondly uh, to that sort of golden afternoon uh, and how pleasant it was to go for that nice long uh, little hike there. And then, of course, speaking at the school, also a, uh, a delight, met so many people, including uh, at least one young man who was a fan of the uh, YouTube videos, and he was sort of like, I can't believe you're here in my school. And uh, <laughs> always kind of fun to uh, to meet people like that who already know my work or know my videos, and uh, I got to thank him face to face. And uh, that kind of brings us to the end of this little video. Again, let me know what you thought of it. Um, I have done vlogs in the past, but very infrequently. Usually, usually in a situation like this where I'm like, ah, I'm under the gun. I haven't prepared a proper video. What am I going to do? And um, I don't know. I, uh, I hope you liked it. Um, I am going to try to go through and splice in photos wherever it is appropriate, just to sort of add a little more of a visual aspect to this. But uh, for now, I think that brings us to the end of the video. I want to thank you all for watching this video. I really hope you enjoyed it. And I'll be back with another one real soon.